Hello students, good evening, good morning or good afternoon, whatever it is for you. So welcome to an academy, this is Dr. Khalil Khan and our course of discussion operating system Nayaga series or our session ho ga on deadlocks. So earlier session we have seen conceptualization of deadlock, jahan par humne baat ki what is formal definition of deadlock and uh, then we have also seen ke uh, what is the characterization of deadlock jahan par humne baat ki necessary conditions and also the philosophy of resource allocation graph. Isse pehle we have also discussed uh, system model where uh, basically like what kind of model are we assuming for the study of deadlock handling strategies wherein we said the process will first make a request for the resource and if the resource is available the resource may be granted and then the process will use the resource and subsequently will release the resource but in case if the operating system does not grant the request then the process may have to wait wait until it is granted and if it waits for a very very long time then that situation is called as starvation and finally we said that in case if the process gets stuck or get blocked forever then that is called deadlock then in that case we uh, said we need to have uh, concrete strategies for dealing with deadlock because deadlock is an undesirable feature as it leads to <clears throat> idleness of cpu due to blockage of processes and under utilization of resources isiliye we need to have concrete strategies for dealing with the problem of deadlock पिछले क्लास में हमने समराइजिंगली कहा था कि डेडलॉक हैंडलिंग स्ट्रेटजीज जो है दे आर एसेंशियली लाइक इफ यू ऑब्जर्व मेथड्स फॉर हैंडलिंग डेडलॉक वी हैव डेडलॉक प्रिवेंशन चेक वी हैव डेडलॉक प्रिवेंशन एंड डेडलॉक अवॉइडेंस सेकंड अप्रोच allow the system to deadlock into uh, uh, to go into deadlock and i mean deadlock avoidance will never allow the system to go into deadlock allow the system to enter into deadlock state and re recover this is called the third strategy deadlock detection and recovery and finally humne kaha deadlock ignorance never i mean uh, deal with the deadlock just ignore it that is called ostrich algorithm so boys and girls essentially these are the four different uh, approaches for dealing with deadlock the first of these two never allow the system to deadlock or deadlock to happen so therefore no deadlock ever occurs no deadlock occurs that means we are adopting a proactive approach so that deadlock does not happen and then second and third last sorry third and fourth allow the system to go into deadlock so in these two strategies deadlock occurs ये फंडामेंटल डिफरेंस है जिसे आपने रिमेंबर करना है विथ रिगार्ड टू डेडलॉक और विथ रिगार्ड टू डीलिंग विथ डेडलॉक तो सबसे पहले हम स्टडी करेंगे डेडलॉक प्रिवेंशन व्हाट इज द बेसिक अप्रोच ऑफ डेडलॉक प्रिवेंशन हाउ कैन बी प्रिवेंट द सिंपल नोशन द सिंपल अप्रोच ऑफ डेडलॉक प्रिवेंशन इज गिवन लाइक दिस डेडलॉक इज प्रिवेंटेड तो लेट मी राइट deadlock is prevented by dissatisfying one or more of the necessary conditions by dissatisfying one or more of the necessary conditions हमने कहा था कि वाइल हमने देखा भी था कि देर आर फोर नेसरी कंडीशन दैट मस्ट एग्जिस्ट इन द सिस्टम इन ऑर्डर फॉर एड लॉक टू हैपन वो है म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन होल्ड एंड वेट नो प्रियम्शन एंड सर्कुलर वेट ये जब फोर कंडीशंस एग्जिस्ट होंगे सिस्टम में देर इज एवरी लायबिलिटी एवरी पॉसिबिलिटी फॉर एड लॉक टू हैपन सो ऑब्वियसली इफ दीज कंडीशन वन और मोर ऑफ दीज कंडीशन आर नॉट एग्जिस्टिंग ऑब्वियसली एंड नेचुरली डेड लॉक विल नॉट हैपन तो हमें करना क्या है we have to make sure that can we dissatisfy each of these conditions and if so how what is the cost that we need to pay for dissatisfaction so chaliye start karenge one by one can we dissatisfy mutual exclusion mutual exclusion ka matlab ye hai ke we must have critical resources we must have shared resources that means we have we have critical section upon which we have to ensure mutual exclusion तो बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स पॉइंट इज इफ यू डोंट वांट म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन टू बी इंप्लीमेंटेड और म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन टू बी अपलिकेबल इन द सिस्टम 
it means that the system should not have any critical or shared resources. But the question is, can we imagine a system without a shared resource? Typically, in a multi-programmed operating system, the answer is no. Agar aap sochoge, samjhoge, realize karoge, to processor itself is a critical resource. At a time, I have many processes contending to run on CPU. I can run only one processor on the CPU, on the core at a time. So therefore, we say that there will be some resources which has to be exclusively used in a critical way in a as a mutual exclusion way. So therefore, we say mutual exclusion is not at all compromisable, is not at all compromisable. So we cannot uh, guarantee dissatisfaction of mutual exclusion for the reason I told just now that the system will always contain at least some shared resources. Then we need to go for hold and wait. If there is a situation where process is holding a resource and waiting for another resource, that situation is called hold and wait. If there is hold and wait, there is a possibility of a deadlock. If there is no hold and wait, there is no deadlock. Matlab, there is no hold and wait. Sida sida baat ye hai ke the process should either be holding the resource or should either be waiting for the resource. I should not have the case where process is holding as well as waiting. Aisa na hona chahi. It should be either hold or should be either wait, but not both. So there are two protocols for this. Number one. Require threads or processes to request and be allocated all its resources. He said, highlight karenge. All its resources. When? Before it begins its execution. Process apna execution start karne se pehle. Sare jitne resources usse chahiye, it should request all. And execution should start if I get all. Agar mujhe do teen milenge, baakhi ke resources nahi milenge. Process or thread will not start. It will say, I will wait for all. So it will be waiting for all or if it is holding all. So, but not both. So, this is the first protocol which will guarantee that, right, guarantee that there will never be hold and wait. There will be never hold and wait. So, either the process will be holding or waiting but not both. Iska drawback kya hoga? Drawback hoga low resource utilization. Kyaunke, jo resources mujhe nahi chahiye, I will be unnecessarily holding them for a long time. Low resource utilization. And the process may have to wait a long time to get all the resources. So, therefore, that may lead to starvation that may lead to starvation. So, this is the first protocol for negating hold and wait. Usi tarah second protocol can also be there for negating hold and wait. Theek hai, if you don't want low utilization, if you don't want under utilization of resources, then what should the process do? The process should request and be allocated only those resources which are needed. Then, but in future, whenever a new resource is needed, the process should release all its resources and make a demand for new requests or new resources. So, this will also guarantee dissatisfaction of hold and wait. Yahan par under utilization of resource nahi rahega, like in yahan par starvation rahega because there is no guarantee that after releasing the resource, I may get the resource back immediately. So, therefore, uh, I may have starvation. Then, secondly, no preemption. If the process is not pre getting preempted of its resource, then I may have uh, the problem. But, however, if you want to negate this condition, so that means if you are negating this, you say check, if you are negating this, if you are negating this, negation of no preemption implies preemption. Preemption of what? Preemption of resources from processes, from processes. It can be self preemption or it can be forceful preemption. If a process that is holding some resource, some resources request another resource, that cannot be immediately allocated to it, then all resources currently being held are released. So, this is called self preemption. Boys and girls, this is called self preemption. Wo sochega ke thik hai, maya meri request complete nahi ho pa rahi hai. So, maybe other processes might be in requirement of my resource. Let them complete. I will complete later on. That is self preemption. Preempted resources are added to the list of resources for which the process is waiting. Thread will be restarted only when it can regain its old resources as well as the new ones that it is requesting. Phir se se restart karna padega. Ye hai basic ideology of resource preemption. Hai? Lastly, circular weight. Impose a total ordering of all resources types and require that each thread, each process request resources in an increasing order of enumeration. Number all resources uniquely and implement a total order. Matlab aap ye keh rahe ho, Circularity avoid karne ke liye we should follow a linear order. 
That means impose a restriction that all the processes should request resources only in increasing order or decreasing order, linear order of resource numbers. If you guarantee this circularity can be avoided. So that is what the last condition say. Impose a total ordering, linear increasing or decreasing ordering of all resources types and require that each thread, each resource, each process requires resources in an increasing order of enumeration. So this is the second approach. So this is the basic ideology of deadlock prevention. So deadlock can be prevented by dissatisfying hold and wait, by dissatisfying no preemption, by negating or dissatisfying circular weight. So deadlock can be prevented at the generic cost, cost of starvation, starvation problem. Then the second approach of dealing with deadlock is called deadlock avoidance. Jisme jahan par jo major, major uh, jo strategy hai, wo hai banker's algorithm for multi-instance. Iski hum baat karin. Banker's algorithm. So banker's algorithm is uh, applicable for multi-instance resource multi instance single instance ke liye algorithm hai resource request based algorithm or resource request resource request based algorithm or maybe you can say resource allocation graph based algorithm for single instance resource allocation graph algorithm wo kafi simple hai aap study kar sakte ho from the textbook of algorithm from the textbook of galvin lekin for multi instance ke liye jo algorithm hai deadlock avoidance hai wo hai banker's algorithm uske bare mein study karenge यहां पर हम प्रॉब्लम देखेंगे यहां पर अप्रोच देखेंगे कि कैसे हम अवॉइड करेंगे डेडलॉक को विद बैंकर सलगोरथम ये बैंकर का मतलब ये है कि जो बैंकिंग सिचुएशन है बैंकिंग सिनेरियो है कि रिक्वेस्ट इनिशिएटेड बाय अ कस्टमर विल बी ग्रांटेड ओनली इफ द रिजल्टिंग स्टेट ऑफ द बैंक इज सेफ सेफ का मतलब ये है इट शुड नॉट लीड टू एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ अनसेफ सिचुएशन इन द बैंक मतलब कोई कस्टमर कुछ पैसा पूछ रहा है तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दैट द बैलेंस शुड बी देयर इनफ बैलेंस एंड द बैंक शुड हैव इनफ इन मनी टू ग्रांट द रिक्वेस्ट एंड मीट द रिक्वायरमेंट्स तभी हम सेफ है टू सेटिस्फाई और टू ग्रांट द रिक्वेस्ट सो दैट इज अ बेसिक आइडियोलॉजी राइट सो लेट्स रीड द पॉइंट रिक्वायर्स दैट द सिस्टम हैज सम एडिशनल ए प्रायोरिटी इंफॉर्मेशन ये इसकी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक है बैंकर्स अवॉइडेंस एल्गोरिथम इज बेस्ड ऑन ए प्रायर प्रायर मतलब पहले से so what is that a priori knowledge what is that a priori information the a priori information is that bankers algorithm requires every process to demand express the demand of the resources that it want before starting its execution process apna execution start karne se pehle will have to tell to the operating system deadlock manager what is the maximum requirement of each of its resource taaki future mein operating system will maintain a table and see whether it can be granted or not it will be granted only if the resulting state is safe and it will not be granted even if i have resources because the system may tend to become unsafe unsafe ka matlab deadlock nahi hai unsafe is like a dangerous state there is a possibility of going into deadlock in future so this is the simplest and most useful model required that every thread declare the maximum number of resources of each type that it may need and the deadlock al the avoidance algorithm dynamically examine the resource allocation state to ensure that there can never be a circular weight condition and the resource allocation state is defined by the number of available and allocated resources and the maximum demand of the process iske jo data structures hai jo hum yahan par use karenge uske bare mein hum thoda yahan par discuss kare theek hai let just uh, i will go through some important points so when a thread or process requests an available resource system must decide it immediate allocation leave the system in safe the basic philosophy of banker's algorithm is to always operate the system in safe state agar after granting the request hamara system safe reh pa raha hai tabhi hum grant karenge warna hum request grant nahi karenge when do we say system is safe if the need of all processes can be satisfied with the current available resources then we say system is safe agar hum need satisfy nahi kar pa rahe hain to matlab system is unsafe so there is a likelihood that in future the system may go into uh, the deadlock state तो बेसिक फैक्ट यह देखिएगा इफ द सिस्टम इज इन सेफ स्टेट देर इज एब्सोल्युटली नो डेडलॉक इफ द सिस्टम इज इन अनसेफ स्टेट इज द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ डेडलॉक डेंजर एंड अवॉइडेंस अल्गोरथम की जो बेसिक आइडियोलॉजी है अवॉइडेंस अल्गोरथम की जो बेसिक फिलोसफी है वो ये है द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ वर्किंग ऑफ अवॉइडेंस अल्गोरथम इज टू ऑलवेज ऑपरेट द सिस्टम इन सेफ मोड नेवर अलाउ द सिस्टम टू गो इन टू अनसेफनेस 
never allow the system to go into unsafeness. ये basic uh, strategy है banker algorithm की तो देखिएगा वेन डायग्राम फॉर्म में आप कह सकते हो दिस इज दिन डायग्राम द सिस्टम स्टेट द सिस्टम कैन बी सेफ सिस्टम कैन बी अनसेफ फ्रॉम अनसेफ यू मे बिकम वी मे गो इन टू डेट लॉ सो द बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ बैंक एलगोरथम इज टू ऑलवेज ऑपरेट द सिस्टम इन सेफ मोड सेफ स्टेट नेवर अलाउ द सिस्टम टू गो इन टू अनसेफ ठीक है कैसे चेक करेंगे वेदर सिस्टम इज सेफ और अनसेफ यू विल सी सो एज ए सेट देर आर टू एलगोरथम्स फॉर बैंक फॉर अवॉइडेंस वन इज फॉर सिंगल इंस्टेंस विच इज कॉल्ड रिसोर्स एलोकेशन ग्राफ The other is for multi instance जो हम डिस्कस करेंगे वो ये है बैंकर्स एलगोरथम सो इन बैंकर्स एलगोरथम लेट देर आर टू सब एलगोरथम वन इज कॉल्ड सेफ्टी एलगोरथम एंड दर इज रिसोर्स रिक्वेस्ट एलगोरथम रिसोर्स रिक्वेस्ट एलगोरथम जो सिंगल इंस्टेंस बेस है इट इज जस्ट कॉल्ड रिसोर्स एलोकेशन ग्राफ बेस्ड एलगोरथम जो कॉन्सेप्ट मैंने पिछले वीडियो में बताया था पार्ट वन के डेडलॉक्स के रिसोर्स एलोकेशन ग्राफ वो आप देख सकते हो इट इज सिमिलर टू दैट ओके वहां पे आप देख सकते हो सो बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स विल गो टू बैंकर सलगोरथम डायरेक्टली बाय वे ऑफ टेकिंग एग्जांपल सुनिएगा इट इज बेसिकली फॉर मल्टी मल्टीपल इंस्टेंस ऑफ रिसोर्स एवरी प्रोसेस और एवरी थ्रेड मस्ट है मैक्सिम यूज When a thread requests a resource, it may have to wait. When a thread gets all its resources, it must return them in a finite amount of time. These are the important highlights of Banker's algorithm. जो data structures है use होंगे Banker's algorithm में इसके बारे में एक बार देख लेते हैं यहाँ पर. Number one, number of processes n, number of resources m. ठीक है? Available indicate the number of available copies of every resource. It's a one-dimensional matrix. When I say available of j is equal to k, there are k instances of resource R j. Max is a two-dimensional matrix, n by m matrix. Max of i j is equal to k का मतलब है process p i is asking maximum of k copies of resource r j. ये है a priori knowledge, a priori information. इसके बाद allocation matrix n by m. Allocation of i j means process p i is allocated k copies of resource r j. Need. Current need of the process is process P I further need K copies of resource R J. So therefore, the value of need will always be equal to max minus allocation. Naturally, I am demanding ten copies. I am allocated four copies. So what is my need? Six copies. Max minus allocation. So first point is every process will have to demand, express a demand for maximum number of copies of a resource, and based on the maximum demand, the process will be allocated some copies, some instances. ठीक है? so max allocation need these are two important three important data structures then we have these the safety algorithm right safety algorithm ke simple working ye hai if the need of all processes can be satisfied with the available resources in some order system is safe in some order maybe first this process then next this process then next that process etc so that can be expressed by means of this algorithm which is very straight forward you can read and understand लेटर पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम मैं यहां पर न्यूमेरिकल एग्जांपल के थ्रू बता दूं रिसोर्स रिक्वेस्ट आई विल टेक लेटर लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल दिस इज द डेटा सेट लुक एट दिस डेटा सेट आई हैव फाइव थ्रेड्स p0 टू p4 और यू कैन से फाइव प्रोसेसेस p0 टू p4 देयर आर थ्री रिसोर्स टाइप a b c a हैज 10 कॉपीज b हैज 5 कॉपीज c हैज 7 कॉपीज द स्नैपशॉट एट टाइम t0 इज दिस इज द मैक्सिमम डिमांड ऑफ ऑल द प्रोसेसेस दिस इज करंट एलोकेशन And these available. तो हमें सबसे पहले दो चीजें डिटरमिन करनी होगी वो है अवेलेबल एंड अदर इज नीड नीड इज मैक्स माइनस अलोकेशन सबसे पहले नीड वैल्यूज डिटरमिन कर लेते हैं विल वर्क आउट द नीड वैल्यूज लुक एट दिस आई एम वर्किंग आउट नीड हियर चेक सो आई विल राइट डाउन नीड ऑफ ए बी सी for the three processes five processes need of abc for five process let us write one by one here okay need of p not max minus allocation 7 minus 0 5 minus 1 3 minus 0 to ye banega 743 theek hai And three two two minus two zero zero one two two. 
and then 902 minus 302, this will become 600. And then 222 minus 211011. Our last hoga 433 minus 002, 431. Max minus allocation. Need. Available how many copies? Look at this. A has total 10. Ye 10 copies may say how many kitne allocate kiye? 3 plus 2 plus 2, 7. So balance available how much? 3. Then B has been totally allocated 2 out of 5. So balance is 3. C has been allocated 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5 out of 7. So matlab 2. So now the question is, question is, can I satisfy the need of all processes with these available resources in some order? If I say like that, then the system is safe. Then the system is safe. So let's see, can I satisfy? So can I satisfy time T naught? Can I, can I satisfy the need of P na, P naught? No, sir, you cannot. Can I satisfy the need of P1? Yes, sir, we can satisfy. I can satisfy 1, 2, 2 from here, 3, 3, 2. I give away 1, 2, 2 from 3, 3, 2. Then what will be my balance? Balance will be uh, 2, 1, 0. Then allocation of P1 will increase. Allocation of P1 will increase by 1, 2, 2. Then when finally P1 complete, it will release all its copies back to available. So eventually after completing P1, Mera new available kya hoga? Current allocation plus current available. Matlab, mera new available banega 532. 200 plus 332, 532. Now with 532, can I meet the requirement of or need of P2? No. Need of P3? Haan, P3 we can satisfy. After completing P3, my new available will become 743. Kyo? Add 211 to 532, 743. With 743, I can next take up P4. It will become 745. 745. And then next I can take a P naught, P naught, then it becomes 755. And then finally it, I will take a P2, then it will become 1057. Kyo? Adding 755 to P2, P2 is 302, 302 is mad, can I say 1057 banega. So therefore I can satisfy the need of all the processes, I say the system is safe. System is safe, there is no problem. So this is the first algorithm of bankers. Safety algorithm to determine whether system is safe or not. Ab jab ke aapko pata chala hai ke system safe hai, to iske baad actual algorithm of banker aayega jiska naam hai resource request. Matlab processes will run in any order and then they will make a request and then we'll have to see whether request can be granted or not. Uski simple strategy ye hai, request should be granted only if the resulting state after satisfying the request is safe. Agar resulting state after satisfying the request is not safe, then we say system is unsafe and hence we don't grant the request. That's the basic ideology. A simple example lekar samajhte hai. So let me see whether I have that example. Haan, ye dekhega. Need humne, abhi humne jo uh, uh, trace out kya wahi hai ye. So and now, now look at this. Let, let us look at this. Let us look at this. Now this example P1 process P1 is now requesting 102. This is my current state. This is my current state. Are you getting my point? This is my current state. So uh, that means with respect to the previous data set itself, this is the current need and the available was 332 originally, this 332, the available was 332, right, need of all the process is there. So now we are running process P1, running for some time process P1 makes a request as 102 and we have to decide whether this request should be granted or not. Or my kaya raha aapko, the basic ideology wo ye hai. Request should be granted only if the resulting state is safe. If resulting state safe na ho, to request grant nahi ki jayegi. Ye basic ideology ho banker's algorithm ka, resource request algorithm ka. So, kaise work karega? Suni ga yaha par. First point, 102 is less than the current available. Ye current available hai. 332. It is yes, it is true. Then we pretend that 102 is also within the need of the process P1. P1 ki need kya hai? P1 ki need previously dekhega. Remember, P1 ki previous need hai 122. So it is within it is uh, within 122 also, P1 ki 122. So we say that we can basically that need is valid. So we will assume karenge ke we are satisfying the request. We are satisfying. So how do satisfy karenge from available? So aap, if I give away 102 from 332, what will be my available? 230. 3 minus 1, 2, 3 minus 0, 3, 2 minus 2, 0. This will be my new available. Or need of P1 from 122, it I subtract 102, it will become 020. 
allocation of p1 will increase to 302 what was the previous allocation check previous allocation of p1 was 200 to 200 i am adding 102 so it become 302 now this is my new state ye mera naya state hai so this new state i have to see i have to check is it safe or unsafe after manipulating this subtracting the request from available subtracting the request from need adding the away, uh, adding the uh, request to the allocation uh, the, i will get a new state and this new state should be safe so let's see whether this new state of the system is safe or not so again we have to run the safety algorithm so let's see at time t1 when i'm making this request am i safe or not let's verify fir wahi start karenge p0 can i satisfy the need of p0743 from 230 no can i satisfy the need of p1020 from 230 ha sir kar sakte ho agar aap p1 ki need satisfy karoge humne kya kaha my new available kya hoga p1 complete hone ke baad humne kaha current allocation should be added to current available 302 if i add to this it will become 532 with 532 can i satisfy the need of process p2 no can i satisfy the need of p3 we can satisfy the need of p3 yes so if i complete p3 for example if i complete p3 for example what will be my new available it will become 743 with 743 i can next take up uh, p4 i can take up p4 so p4 lene se kya hoga p4 lene se mera new available banega 745 phir uske baad i can take up p0 so my new available will become 755 kyun add allocation to available that's what i'm doing and then i will take up p2 so therefore uh, it will become 1057 again so therefore system is safe to kehne ka matlab ye hai agar hum ye request grant karenge tab bhi hamara resulting state of system is safe so therefore we are granting we grant agar resulting state of system safe nahi rahega to hum grant nahi karenge ye hai basic notion to main ideology of banker's algorithm is the request of any process like 102 will be granted only if the resulting state after satisfying the request is safe अब वो सेफ हुआ उसी तरह एज एन असाइनमेंट आप चेक कर सकते हो कैन रिक्वेस्ट 330 बी ग्रांटेड अब मेरा 230 अवेलेबल है फ्रॉम 230 हाई पे एंड सेटिस्फाई 330 आई कैन नॉट दिस इज नॉट ग्रांटेड उसी तरह 020 बाय प्रोसेस पी नॉट स्टिल कैन नॉट बी ग्रांटेड आप चेक कर सकते हो बाद में द रिजल्टिंग स्टेट इज अनसेफ रिजल्टिंग स्टेट इज अनसेफ सो देयरफॉर इट कैन नॉट बी ग्रांटेड ये है बेसिक नोशन ऑफ बैंकर्स अल्गोरिथम तो चलिए आगे बढ़ेंगे next strategy or the last strategy is deadlock detection and recovery this strategy allows the system to go into deadlock to so, yahan par do approaches hain ek hai detection aapne detect karna hoga ke deadlock hai ya nahi hai fir uske baad aapne recovery karna to so, question is the question is how are we going to detect the deadlock kaise karenge whether system has a deadlock or not there are two detection algorithms one is detection for detection for single instance resource the other is detection for multi instance resource single instance agar ho aapke system mein to aap detection kaise karenge that is done by maintaining uh, deriving a graph called wait for graph example lekar samajhte hain ye hamari graph hai से यहां पर कुछ लिंक्स मिसिंग है लेट मी ड्रॉ द लिंक्स समथिंग लाइक दिस दिस इज माय ग्राफ बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स देर आर वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव प्रोसेसेस राइट लाइक दिस रिसोर्स आर वन सिंगल इंस्टेंस और ऑल सिंगल इंस्टेंस all are single instance one one copy p1 is requesting copy of r1 r1 is in use by p2 p2 is requesting r3 r3 is in use by p5 and like that others so if you see the states of the processes p1 is blocked p2 is blocked p3 is blocked p4 is blocked p5 is not blocked out of five processes four processes are blocked so that is a symptom for a deadlock and hence we activate the deadlock detection test the deadlock detection test is very simple from this graph we have to derive another meta graph another meta graph by name wait for graph the wait for graph will have only processes as vertices no resource vertex so hum skeleton lenge processes ka yahan par all 
five processes check i will call this as process p1 i will call this as process p2 this as process p3 this as process p4 this as process p5 so if you see the graph p1 is dependent on resource r1 and p on p2 so that means i can collapse this vertex and put a direct weight for link from p1 to p2 so i say that p1 is waiting on p2 p2 is waiting on p5 p2 is waiting on p3 p2 is waiting on p4 and p3 is waiting on p4 p4 is waiting on p1 this is called this is called wait for graph wait for graph on this wait for graph you are what you are going to do you are going to run cycle detection algorithm run cycle detection algorithm algorithm to detect the presence of cycle algorithm to detect the presence of a cycle if there is a cycle there is a deadlock because resources are single instance based so yahan par we have cycle the cycle is present between processes if you observe p1 p2 p3 p4 p1 so jo processes cycle mein honge namely p1 to p4 they are in deadlock they are in deadlock ye hai algorithm for single instance resource the resources single instance ke honge detection is done by wait for graph running cycle detection algorithm and if there is a cycle report the cycle with the number of process in the cycle agar multi instance resource honge then the data structures and the algorithm is exactly similar to safety algorithm difference ye hoga ki yahan par process ke paas koi maximum a priori knowledge nahi rahegi we'll have only two thing current allocation current request like these are current allocation these are current request and these are available we can calculate the available how much i have a seven copies b two copies c six copies so out of seven copies how many are allocated two plus three plus two seven so i have zero copies of available out of two copies of b all two are invested so zero available c i have uh, how many allocation 3 4 5 6 so i have six copies zero i don't have any available request dekh lijiyega process p not is not making any request p1 is making request 2 0 not no request and this is making uh, request and this is making request there are two process which are not blocked others are blocked three are blocked the way this algorithm work for detection is just like safety algorithm system is said to be safe if there is no cycle if there is no deadlock safety algorithm ki tarah karega agar system system safe ho there is no deadlock agar system basically deadlock ho so that means if i cannot satisfy the request of all the processes then we say the system is in deadlock aur jo processes ke request aap satisfy nahi kar sakte then such processes are said to be in deadlock right now if you observe if you observe there is no deadlock लेकिन जैसे ही सपोज फॉर एग्जांपल इफ पी टू मेक अ रिक्वेस्ट एज जीरो जीरो वन तब आप चेक करोगे कि आई कैन नॉट सेटिस्फाई द रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ ऑल द प्रोसेसेस एंड इवेंचुअली आई कैन सेटिस्फाई द रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ ओनली पी नॉट सो देर फोर आई वुड से पी वन टू पी फोर वुड गेट इन्वॉल्व इन डेडलॉक तो डेडलॉक डिटेक्शन टेस्ट का आउटपुट यही रहेगा कि वॉट आर डेडलॉक प्रोसेसेस वॉट आर डेडलॉक प्रोसेसेस and then after taking the deadlock processes as output these deadlock processes will go as input to recovery recovery mein there are couple of approaches so that we are going to talk about recovery the first approach is process termination kill all the processes that are involved in deadlock kill all the drawback is some important processes will get killed so therefore become selective in killing that is called kill one at a time the advantage is you can save some processes but the drawback is you after killing one process you will have to basically verify whether system is in deadlock or not so you may have to run deadlock detection algorithm multiple times in that case in that scenario there are some like about all deadlock processes about matlab kill about one process at a time in which order should we choose these are the design decisions we have to look into like priority of the process how long the uh, process has completed resources that the thread has used resources that the thread needs to complete how many threads will need to be terminated ye sare ke sare points hame address karne honge when we are terminating or killing the process or the thread the second approach for dealing with deadlock uh, recovery is called resource preemption dekhi after all the problem of deadlock happens due to lack of resources so why should we kill the process go for resource preemption 
select a victim process or victim thread, roll back, preempt some resources, roll back, just like database transaction ko roll back, karte ho, usi yahan par bhi you can go for roll back. Roll back the process state and again continue. So some resource uh, allocation will improve, resource availability will improve and run detection tests. If deadlock is overcome, be happy and continue. Otherwise, deadlock still exists, then continue this process of resource preemption and rollback until deadlock cycle is broken. So that's what we are saying here. Return to some safe state, restart the thread for that state. So the drawback is starvation may happen because if a process is repeatedly getting killed or repeatedly getting preempted of its resources, then we say that such processes will starve to complete. It's like around. If a process is repeatedly getting terminated and repeatedly getting involved in deadlock, repeatedly getting preempted of its resources and repeatedly getting involved in deadlock, such processes will starve to complete. You had drawback of deadlock prevention or deadlock uh, recovery with aborting the process and resource preemption. So, boys and girls, by and large, these are the various strategies for dealing with the problem of deadlock. So summarize Karunga, deadlock prevention, deadlock avoidance when used in the system will never allow the system to go into deadlock. Deadlock is prevented by negating or dissatisfying necessary conditions. Deadlock avoidance is done by using a priori knowledge, maintaining a priori information of the processes. There are two algorithms for it. One is resource allocation and graph based algorithm and the other is banker's algorithm. Resource allocation graph based algorithm is for single instance resource and banker's algorithm is for multi instance resource. The basic objective of banker's avoidance algorithm is to always operate the system in safe state, never allow the system to go into unsafeness. The other two approaches is allow the system to go into deadlock, detect and recover and fourth and last strategy is deadlock ignorance ostrich algorithm which says no strategy. Like the ostrich ignore the problem and do nothing and there in your system also if you are applying deadlock ignorance, no strategy, you don't take any action like ostrich. Simply deadlock occurs, you restart the system. And fortunately or unfortunately most of the contemporary operating system, desktop based operating system like Unix, Linux and Windows, they follow deadlock ignorance for the reasons that we have seen in earlier class, earlier lecture. Cost may be high, deadlock may occur very seldom, so why should we go for deadlock handling strategies? So boys and girls, these are some of the uh, important strategies for dealing with deadlocks, okay? Thank you.